It's been a while from our last basic electronics video. I wanted for some time to make a detailed video about transformers, to talk about basic transformers principles, but also some induction laws, transformers configurations, induced EMF, transformer calculator, materials and so on. In this video I'll try to make a brief summary of the transformer theory, give you examples, links to learn more, animations with the working principle of transformers, Lorentz and Faraday laws and how to properly calculate the transformer size, the amount of turns for the coils, the copper wire diameter and so on. Have in mind this is just a basic level video. So if you are interested into this topic stick around and learn more about transformers. Make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell. So let's get started. Video sponsored by GLC PCB. They not only have a great quality PCB prototype service for only $2, but now they also have a great SMT service where you can get the PCBs with all the components already soldered in place. And they also have free SMT assembly before 29 December. And that means that the customer only needs to pay the component. No need to pay assembly fees, setup fees, engineering and so on. So go to glcpcb.com and try this new service. What's up my friends, welcome back. So here I have a lot of transformers. Some of these have a ferrite core. Others are made out of an iron core. Some are very small with just a few windings. And some are huge with thousands of windings and very high voltage output. We have transformers with multiple outputs. For example this one here that has multiple pins and different ratios. We have transformers that can be used as a coupled inductor, as we have seen in the flyback tutorial from a few weeks ago. So the flyback transformer is another configuration. We have transformers with just a 1 to 1 ratio, like this one here, which can still be considered a transformer. We also have these very high voltage transformers from some LCD screens, that could output thousands of volts. So as you can see we have all kind of configurations, sizes, winding ratios, material for the core and so on. So let's see how transformer works and then step by step learn more about all this. You will see that it's not that difficult. So first the basic theory of what is a transformer and how it works. Let's start with a simple copper wire. When we apply voltage at the ends of the copper wire, current will pass through that wire and the current value is depending on the applied voltage and the wire resistance. When current passes through a conductor such as this copper wire, a magnetic field is produced around the wire. We can note the direction of this magnetic field with the rule of the right hand. The thumb marks the direction of the current and the other fingers the direction of the created magnetic field around the wire. So imagine this is our wire. We apply positive at this end and at the other end we apply ground. Current will pass from the bottom to the top of this wire. So I place my thumb like this. So the magnetic field will be represented like this. Also the closer we get to the wire, the stronger will be the magnetic field. Now the magnetic field is not the same as the magnetic flux, which is the variable that we will use with our transformers. Usually we represent a magnetic field around the conductor with some arrows pointing the direction of that field. And this field is ideally infinite. But the magnetic field has a flux density. In our case that is represented with how many arrows we have in a certain zone. More arrows means bigger flux density. If we have fewer arrows, lower flux density. Now the magnetic flux is the integral of the magnetic flux density that passes through a certain area. Let's say this circle here. The magnetic flux will be higher closer to the wire than far from the wire, obviously. So now that we know all this very basic theory, let's pass from a simple wire to a winding. These are just multiple wires placed one on top of the other, so the magnetic field can sum up. This wire here, by the rule of the right hand, will create a magnetic field in this direction. This one here like this, and so on. And if we sum up, we have that on this side of the coil, all arrows will sum in this direction. In the middle of the coil, all the arrows in this direction, and on the other side in this direction, 
and have in mind that these are all around, 360 degrees. So we end up with this shape of magnetic flux. The more wires we have, in this case more windings, the higher will be the magnetic density. So why is this important? Well, first of all, this is a static magnetic flux. Meaning that the magnetic value is always the same. Because as I told you before, the magnetic value is given by the current value, and the current value is given by the applied voltage and the wire resistance. In our case, that resistance is constant, and the applied voltage is DC, meaning that it's always the same, so the magnetic density is also always the same. But transformers can only work with oscillating magnetic fields. So, instead of DC voltage, let's now apply AC voltage. Since the voltage is now increasing and decreasing, so will be the magnetic flux around the coil. Ok guys, so this step right here will be our step 1 of understanding the transformer. So we leave this aside, and now let's talk about magnetic induction. Faraday's law of induction says that the magnetic field will produce an electromotive force over another conductor. It basically means that when we insert a wire, or in this case multiple wires inside of a coil, an electromotive force or EMF is produced inside of that wire. This EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux. That's why a static magnetic flux won't induce EMF because the rate of change in that case is zero. Only alternating magnetic flux could induce EMF. So with this induced EMF, we have a current flow through that wire. A flow of current will create a voltage drop between the ends of the coil. So, this easy, we pass from magnetic flux changes to voltage drop at the output of the coil. And this will be step 2 of understanding the transformer. So now we put the two coils together in a single phase transformer. And these are called primary and secondary. The primary will have the AC voltage connected so an alternating magnetic flux is created around. By Faraday law, this magnetic flux reaches the secondary coil and induces current in that wire, so a voltage drop at the output. This voltage is very, very small, because the flux density over the secondary area is very small also. Basically 90% of the magnetic flux is wasted all around. Only a tiny portion reaches the secondary coil. So for that we use the magnetic core. We place that in between of the primary and the secondary. This can be made out of iron, steel, ferrite or another low reluctant magnetic material, and depending on that material, it will conduce the magnetic flux more or less. It will heat up more or less, and have different capabilities. As soon as we place the core in between, this will guide the magnetic flux through. Almost the entire flux will pass to the other side. And I say almost because this is not 100% efficient, of course. So this will be part 3 of understanding the transformer. We now have the input voltage passed to a variable magnetic flux. That magnetic flux induces current in the secondary and we have a different output voltage. So in that way we transform the voltage. But now we need some formulas. Let's name the voltage across the primary V1. Then we name the amount of turns of the primary coil N1. If I divide V1 by N1, we get the voltage drop on each winding and we name that X. So this voltage per winding is the same on the secondary coil, considering an ideal transformer. But the secondary coil has a different amount of windings, with the name of N2. So in order to get the output voltage, we multiply the voltage drop per winding by the amount of windings, so V2 is equal to X by N2. So these are our first formulas. If N1 is equal to N2, then we have the same voltage at the output, so this will be a 1 to 1 ratio. If N2 is higher than N1, the output voltage will be higher as well. And if N2 is lower, the output will be lower. Ok, so now we know the basic of a transformer. But there is more. How do you select the wire type, the core size, material and so on? Well, to make it easy and not complicate our work with dozens of formulas, we use a pre-made calculator, and we will see that later. But before that, more things about transformers. You must know that in an ideal transformer, the output power is the same as the input power. But power is voltage times current. For example, let's say that the input voltage of a step-down transformer is 220 volts. 
the resistance of the coil and the reactance will create a current flow of 0.5 amps. That's an ideal input power of 110 watts. So the same could be at the output. But if the output is 12 volts, then the output current is 110 divided by 12, and that's equal to 9.1 amps. So we can get higher current at the output. But you must take in consideration the used wire. For that you should know. More windings will give you higher resistance, so lower current. So you need thicker wire if you want the same current, because thicker wire will have a lower resistance. For high current you need to increase the thickness of the copper wire. If the oscillating voltage is of high frequency, as for example used in switch power supplies, you should use a ferrite core, because these are the best suited for high frequency applications. Steel lamination cores are best suited for low frequency applications, for example for speeds between 50 and 60 Hz, as we have on our main home outlets. With lower frequencies, core material selection is driven by the core saturation considerations. The eddy current losses are low, so steel laminations can be considered. That's why pretty much all the steel transformers are laminated, to avoid eddy current problems. With higher frequencies, eddy currents can be significant, so here a ferric core is commonly used because their high electrical resistivity minimizes the eddy current losses. So remember and have in mind this. The size of the core and the wire diameter will limit the amount of windings, because you don't have enough space. But that will limit the power. Also for higher current use thicker wire. For higher frequencies consider a ferrite core and for eddy current problems consider laminations. You should also have in mind the reactance of the coil that could change with the frequency. For high voltage transformers make sure that the voltage drop between each winding is not too high, otherwise voltage arcs could be created between the windings. We usually use a separator between several windings in order to prevent that. For now we've only seen a one phase transformer but in future videos I could also explain the triple phase one. Placing multiple windings at the output will give you different output values. But the total power at the output coils must be the same as on the primary. Use the flyback transformer in switch power supplies and get a decent regulated voltage at the output. See more about this in the flyback video below. You can download and install this transformer calculator app for Android. You can select different specs. You can select if it's a dry or a non-dry transformer. But this is more for those huge triple phase transformers, and it means that one is submerged into oil to keep it cool and the other one is not. So select the configuration. For our video we use a single phase. I want to use the input of 220 volts and have a 12 volts at the output, and 0.5 amps at the input. For the primary you can now see the power and which fuse you should use. Then if you insert the diameter of the wire you want to use, you get different results. The results are marked with green color. The AWVG value will give you the wire diameter. So as you can see, the thicker is the wire, more current it could handle. Now this is a basic calculator. I'll leave some links below to more complicated calculators with all the specifications. Some of these are not free, but only cost a few dollars. So guys, I hope that this video is a good introduction to transformers. This is a very low level video. We will see other characteristics in future videos. I hope that you like this, so if so give a like to this video and consider subscribe. Activate the notification bell for future videos and thanks to all my patrons for the support. Thanks again and see you later guys.